NASA just announced that it will roll back the SLS from the launch pad. What exactly went wrong with this $23 billion rocket this time? Can it lift off the ground at all? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. You know, your comments and insights have been extremely helpful to the community here at Great SpaceX. There have been huge updates on today's episode, so let's dive right in. On Saturday night, the space agency announced plans to roll the large SLS rocket from the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center to the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, in the coming days. Honestly, this marks a notable step back for the program, which has tried since April 1st to complete a wet dress rehearsal test. This decision comes after three failed tries during the last two weeks. Each fueling attempt was scuttled by one or more technical issues with the rocket, its mobile launch tower, or ground systems that supply propellant and gases. During the most recent attempt on April 14th, NASA succeeded in loading 49% of the core stage liquid oxygen fuel tank, but the liquid hydrogen flow was stopped at the 5% point after engineers detected a hydrogen leak. Jeremy Parsons, deputy manager of NASA's Exploration Ground Systems Program at Kennedy, tweeted during Thursday's countdown rehearsal, Hydrogen is extremely hazardous, cold, and a small molecule that is known for leaking. All of these systems have been sealed, leak checked, and tested to the highest extent possible prior to wet dress rehearsal. But the leak checks between the SLS core stage and the mobile launch platform have, until recent fueling tests, all occurred at warm ambient temperatures. Liquid hydrogen fuel is chilled to negative 423 degrees Fahrenheit, and liquid oxygen is stored at negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit. At those temperatures, valves, seals, and gaskets can contract and change shape, revealing a leak that wasn't apparent in warmer conditions. Hydrogen can find its way through seals that would contain other molecules. Thus, as Parsons tweeted, under the unique operating conditions with the rocket, we are prepared to know leaks are a realistic possibility. NASA afterward also said the leak discovered is located in an area called the purge can on the exterior of the tail surface mast umbilical, a 10 meter tall structure that provides propellant and electricity lines to the rocket on the pad. In fact, hydrogen leaks have cropped up in other rocket programs. NASA engineers spent months tracing hydrogen leaks that kept NASA's space shuttles grounded in 1990. Ground crew veterans at Kennedy Space Center still talk about what they call the Summer of Hydrogen, the long, frustrating months in 1990 when the shuttle fleet was grounded by an elusive hydrogen leak that foiled their efforts to fill the orbiter's external fuel tank. Who knows? Maybe history does repeat itself, and SLS's two-day wet dress rehearsal test may take two months. Even Wayne Hale, a former NASA flight director and former manager of the Space Shuttle program, also expressed his sympathies with the Artemis team. And in the latest update, NASA said that its contractors as well as its agencies will use the next several weeks to address problems that popped up during the fueling tests when the SLS rocket returns to the large VAB. For example, the supplier of the gaseous nitrogen system, Air Liquide, will upgrade its capabilities. NASA will also replace a faulty check valve on the upper stage of the rocket as well as fix a leak on the mobile launch tower's tail service mast umbilical. Saturday's announcement didn't include any proposed timelines, but we got one on April 18th. Although the Artemis 1 team is still analyzing data and mapping out the next steps, the plan is to roll back to the VAB early next week. As Charlie Blackwell Thompson, Artemis launch director, said during a call with reporters, currently Tuesday, or April 26th, is the time frame. It will likely take the rocket about 12 hours to get back to the VAB if last month's rollout from the cavernous facility is any guide. It's unclear how long the Artemis 1 stack will stay in the building because the mission team isn't yet sure how much work they plan to do there. But most likely, work on the rocket at that location will probably take up most of the month of May at least. If that's the case, then NASA will have to make some difficult decisions. It could opt to roll the rocket and its mobile launch tower to the pad a second time and try again to complete the wet dress rehearsal test. Then, following its normal procedure, NASA would roll the rocket back to its assembly building to arm the flight safety system before rolling for a third time to the launch pad for liftoff. It seems the absolute earliest the SLS rocket could launch into such a scenario would be August, but a fall liftoff may be more likely. Another option NASA could pursue is to roll out, complete a wet dress test on the pad, and then if that is successful, go ahead and launch within a few days. 
Under such a scenario, NASA might be able to launch the SLS rocket in June or July. However, this would be risky due to the flight safety system. During a teleconference on Friday, Artemis launch director Charlie Blackwell Thompson confirmed that there is a 20-day timeline once the flight safety system is armed. After the system is activated, it will take about a week to make final preparations in the vehicle assembly building and a week to roll to the launch pad and make preparations there. That would leave just a single week for a fueling test, recycling of commodities, and perhaps one or two launch attempts before the 20-day window closes. In other words, this means the wet dress test would have to be nearly flawless, and then the launch attempt would need to be flawless as well. It would also mean that summertime weather in Florida, when there are numerous thunderstorms and other inclement conditions, would have to cooperate. Finally, NASA engineers must weigh a host of other factors, such as wear and tear on the rocket, its side-mounted boosters being exposed outside, as well as seemingly innumerable lifetime considerations with the hardware. For example, agency officials are closely tracking the health of the fuel in the solid rocket boosters, which were stacked about 16 months ago, among other issues. Still, NASA seems confident that it will get through this painful teething process for the SLS rocket, a program that is now 11 years old in the making in which NASA has invested more than $30 billion in the rocket and ground systems now being tested. As Blackwell Thompson said Friday, there's no doubt in my mind that we will finish this test campaign and we will listen to the hardware and the data will lead us to the next step and we will take the appropriate steps and we will launch this vehicle. I don't know exactly what that date is, but there's no doubt in my mind that we'll finish the test campaign and we will be ready to go fly. Well, maybe this summer, maybe this fall, or maybe later. Well, only thing to do now is just wait and see. Wayne Hale made an even more concrete guess. He said it will take about five tries to get it right. Incidents are inevitable, but as Wayne said, the reason this looks so bad is a failure to explain the situation clearly and provide realistic expectations to the public. Hope they will learn that it is better to be transparent and realistic with the taxpayers who are, after all, paying for it, he added. And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Everyone's support motivates us to continue creating more quality content. And if you enjoyed today's content, please give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Which part did you like the most? Every comment and share helps us grow. Thanks a lot. I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.